Let us go into the word of God together. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise. Let's pray together, saints of God. Praise, Praise God. So righteous, eternal God, our Father, our Savior, yes, and our soon coming King, as you've brought us before the tabernacle uh, of your presence one more time, as now, God, we have a desire to go in a little bit further where your word is concerned. I pray, O oh God, that you'll bind our hearts together. Knit us on one accord, Father. Help us, O oh God, as we break bread of your word tonight. That every word of uh, my mouth as God, you're on the shepherd. And every word uh, of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable. Also that of the hearers, God. So anything that sh they shall hear, thus saith the Lord tonight. God, it will not just be effectual only in the natural. But it will cut away some things from their spirit, from their soul that is not of thee. Father, we place tonight's Bible study into your hands. We pray, O oh God, that you lift up a standard. Give us revelation beyond God that what we can know in our natural understanding. Help us, O oh God, to catch a glimpse of what it is that it is deep in your word. Because you are the word. Impress yourself upon our spirit tonight. Release a word in this house. So that every heart that is in this house might be saturated. Everyone that is online on our Zoom platform or even our streaming that we're streaming live tonight. Father God, I pray that you'll tabernacle in the midst of us one more time. Take us beyond the veil, God. We want to go beyond the veil of ourselves, even beyond uh, you as uh, if we were just thinking that you only existed in the natural. Uh, even if we don't believe that you rose from the dead, we need to get beyond the veil of your flesh and find out what it is to be spiritual, to be connected with you, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Tonight we look to you by faith. Tonight we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Have thy no way. Father, we have to let self be slain. You can't do that for us. We have to surrender. We have to give up. We have to walk in obedience. And when we do that, then God, your word will have effect. It will take root because our hearts is based on the, the parabolic soil. There's four different categories. But unless the, the soils of our heart is plowed, and unless the debris and the, and the rocks and the hedges are removed, God, so our hearts is, is palatable. That when the seed of your word goes forth, we'll say yes and amen, every one of them. This we ask and this we pray. This we ask and this we pray. God bless you tonight, saints of God. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. I'm asking you to join me. Praise God. I'm asking even those who are looking after the platform to support me tonight. Praise God. Join us in the book of Psalms 23 for our night's lesson, saints of God. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. It is time for the word. Praise God. Join me in the book of Psalms 23 in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, saints of God. Come on, saints. Can you hear me at home? Praise God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Hearkening than that of the lambs. Amen, saints of God. Come on, so I need you to join me at home tonight. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, saints. Can somebody say amen at home? Praise God, saints of God. Amen. We want to we flow on one accord. If there's disunity, we don't accomplish anything in our prayer, nor we accomplish anything in our Bible studies. We must be on one accord. Amen. So I'm asking you to join me at this time. Those who are praying, amen, the time for praying is over. Praise God. So you must heed the voice of, uh, amen, the shepherd, the under-shepherd in the house. Amen. Praise God. The Lord has not given you a spirit that cannot yield to the shepherd in the house. So God bless you at home tonight. We want to get into the word. Amen. Because it's, if it, the fervent righteous Fervent, righteous, fervent, on fire, fervent, continually, fervent, always, righteous, pry of the righteous. Amen. We are made clean through the word. We're made clean through the word. I don't see Jesus struggle when he was here on earth. He didn't struggle. Jesus never struggled when he was here on the planet. 
And Jesus is typifying what a son of God or a child of God should be. He never struggled. He never had a hard time. He never um, had difficulty in figuring out what the will of the Father was. Amen. He was completely surrendered. Every day he was surrendered. And so instantaneously he knew what the Father's will is because you can't wait till you're in trouble. You need an, a, a, a rhema word. You need a now word. Amen. Praise God. You need a now word. So that's why you're not only to study to show yourself approved. If you're in a situation and you don't have a word for it, what do you do? By the time you scramble, that moment, that, 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 that moment is now gone. Amen. And it could cost you your life. Amen. So the Bible says now is, now is, now what? Faith is. That means you have to believe. And believe leads to obedience. Amen. So you must possess faith faith. And then if you say you have faith, James would say, you know, then there have to be some works to produce that or shows that you have faith. But then you need obedience to back up the fact that you say you believe. Because anybody could say they believe, but if you get instruction and you don't carry them out, what good is the instructions to you? So faith without works is dead. But you must believe and walk in your obedience, saints of God. So we honor him tonight. I just want to get over to Psalms 23 in brief. As you know, we're pivoting and we're starting a new section tonight. Uh, the same book, Joshua. I hope you're reading and studying in the background also. Amen. Praise God. You have to do a personal reading. And when Pastor Moran comes, amen, you need a teacher, saints of God. Amen. You need a revelator. You can't not go to school and, and learn ABCs, learn mathemat mathemat mathematics, learn algebra, amen, praise God, and learn um, history, English, and other subject matters. You need to go to school, even if you don't like um, be it a certain subjects or even if you don't like the teacher. It does not make your learning any less important. You need to go to school. Amen. So same thing, amen, where the word of God is concerned. You need to be familiar with it. Amen. You, the Bible said in Joshua, we didn't uh, look at it necessarily, amen, as deeply. But Joshua was told by God, amen, to stay in it, amen, meditate in it day and night, amen, praise God. And think of where even, praise God, Solomon got the wisdom from to lead God's people. So join me tonight, saints of God. God bless you. Join me in the book of Psalms number 23. Amen. Praise God. We honor him for his word. And after we're in the book of Joshua chapter 6. God bless you as we go ahead together. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone in your respectful places. The, the atmosphere is damp. The weather is a little bit um, on the damp, wet side, cold side, dreary, even windy side. So you might wonder um, that your spirit even takes on that kind of connotation. But don't allow it. Don't allow it, saints of God. Allow your spirit to always soar. When you have the word of God, you're always in a now position. Amen. Because the great I am is with you. Amen. So you are always present. He's a present help. Amen. He's the great I am. So he can be all that you need for any situation, any circumstances, any experience. The great I am is all that you need. Amen. Praise God. I am that I am. So from the book of Psalms, number 23, amen. Praise God. I trust that you, uh, if you're not uh, going to support us in our Bible studies tonight, just mute yourself if you have noise in the background. Wisdom builds a house, saints of God. So just mute yourself. Amen. If you are associated in another, multitasking in something else, wisdom builds a house. Amen. And we declare and we decree the apostolic anointed. Now, we'll not just flow freely through this house, amen, but we'll bring this house on, on the one, one authority ship and one order, and that the Holy Spirit, amen, that governs this church. Aisha. And he has an under-shepherd, amen. Praise God, an angel of the house. So God bless you. Let's go into the book of God, the word of God. Every book of, of the Bible is God, is the written word. And that word was, before it was written, it was spoken, amen. And please understand, it's not just one book. But it's a library. It's a volume of book. There's 66. Amen. So God bless you tonight. So the book from the Psalms, 23. The scriptures declared. Amen. Praise God. If I just find the correct passage, amen. I was over in the book of Job. But maybe I'll get back there and see what that's trying to 
Let me begin there, even before we read Psalms 23. I don't think anything is by luck or by chance. Nothing happens by mistake. So I'm going to journey back over to Psalms 23. Uh, forgive me, Job 23, and I'm going to read out of there first. Then we come back, amen, and land for our introduction to our Tuesday night Bible study. We always spend a little time in a night's lesson, which is of Psalms mainly, amen, but God has moved my thought to Job 23, and I didn't know that I was there until, but let's see what Job 23 says, amen, from the book of Job chapter 23, then we'll go into the shepherd Rick of God, because he's a shepherd. So Job 23, Job proclaims God's righteous judgment. Then Job answered and said, even today my complaint is bitter, even today. Now I'm reading the New King James Version. I could get to the King James if you'd like. Maybe you like that language. It sounds a little bit more palatable because you're used to the King James, or it connects with your spirit a little bit more. But let's see what both of them will say tonight. Again, I read the first verse from Job 23, New King James Version. Scripture declare, even today, so today now is, amen, you need the word of God. Because Job is, we're going to see, he says it in verse 1, he's bitter. So imagine if you don't have a word for that condition today. Imagine he's going to have to, he's not familiar with the word of God. Tomorrow he's looking for a word. But the word was relevant today. Study to show yourself approved, Bethel. So the scriptures declared, even today my complaint is bitter. It's okay to have a communication and to be in relationship and a dialogue, even to have a conversation with God. I'm going to take you there tonight, even when we look at the book of Job, chapter, uh, Joshua 6. Think of Lot and Abraham. God is open for a conversation. He's willing. Amen. But you have to, again, then know where you're at as the clay and know who's the potter. Even though you have a deep conversation that's two-sided, not just one-sided, back and forth with God, then you still need to submit your will and recognize who is the potter or the creator. So here again, Job, you know his situation. He needs a word. But he's saying, even today, my complaint is bitter. My hand is listless because of my groaning. The man is going through. The man is experiencing some things in his physical body. That's enough to turn a lot of us off. How much, norm, how, much norm, how much more now he has to deal with it psychologically, deal with it in his emotions, in his will, in his senses. One of your sense is to see what if sores, he had to take some st stone and, and scrape his sores. What if one of the sores was on his eyelid and he can't open his eyes? Think, Bethel, think outside of your personal situation. And then we go to the Word of God to acclimatize ourselves with what God did for somebody in the past. Job said, even today, I can't, I'm not worried about tomorrow or even what happened in the past. Today, I'm not in a good place. Job is having difficulty. Even today, my complaint is, ha, ah, you can complain, but the Bible says don't sin. Even, amen, my God, you can get angry, but don't sin. Complain, but be careful. If you can, how, I, oh God, even today my complaint is bitter. My hand is listless because of my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Now it takes you even beyond his natural experiences. Because dare I say again, he's, he's suffering in the physical. Dare I say, psychological in his mind, he's struggling. But when Job, as we look at verse number three, his struggle as he complains, communicates the Word of God to God at that time. He's having a conversation with God, so it's back and forth. It's a relationship, dialogue, and it becomes, it becomes now the living Word to us. He is struggling spiritually because if he's suffering physically, and he's suffering emotionally, psychologically, mentally, he's saying, where is God spiritually when I need him? Think about uh, the woman at the well. Think about blind Bartimaeus. Think about God can fix. Think about Lazarus in the grave. God can turn. Uh, he's the I am. He can do anything but fail. So Job knew Jehovah. Job knew that the creator. Job knew God. And in his plight, in his situation, Job had a wonderful life and children and multiplicity of blessings in the natural and the spiritual, in the, in the psychological. He was blessed. 
and, and highly favored by God. Hey, hey, read Job chapter 1. But God decides to strip him. When God strips you, and when your prayer is not heard, what do you do? Job says, my struggle now is not in the natural. My struggle now is not even my mind. But Paul says, with our mind. So you have to be careful. But Job says, I am trying to. You go to the end of the book, chapter 42 and so forth. Job says, I finally found him, whom I'm looking for. So Job's struggle is spiritually. If I... You remember Job chapter 1? He said he woke up every day and he offered sacrifice. He was the priest to his house. He offered up. He was in the position of God. And when God came in Christ, he came as a high priest in flesh. So Job for his generation, for his family, for his time, for his generation, Job was a high priest. Think of a Melchizedek. Now Job was not Melchizedek, but he was a high priest after the, the oracles and the order of God. And Job is struggling. If I've done everything to please you, as a high priest, even over my own family. Why did you strip me? I'm trying to find you. Why won't you show up? Why won't you reveal yourself to me? Oh, God, tonight, uh, uh, let me go over to the King James Version. He said again in verse 4, verse number 3, Oh, that I might know where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Ah, ah, pray for your pastor. I will order my cause. He then have a, I, oh, I wish we had time, wish we had time, I wish we had time, wish we had time, but there's going to be a day when time waits on no man. Amen. You and I will be lying in a narrow grave, but I have no intent to stay there because Jesus rose. He is risen from the dead. He rose triumphant as he said, he's, oh God, he came for two things, uh, the keys of death and hell. And otherwise he says, all power is now given unto me. So Job said, I want to find a seat where the king is. I can't struggle like this any longer. I'm tired. Uh, are you, uh, are you, oh my God. There's a song that says, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's a friend uh, like you might have. No other such a friend or brother. He, he's relatable. He's a friend. He's a brother. Uh, can I tell you, uh, sometimes friends are brothers and brothers. Uh, go ask Cain and Abel about that situation. Uh, a friend won't sell you out. A friend won't kill you. A friend won't despise you. Brothers and sisters does that. Uh, but you, you don't want me to teach. Them. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I would order my cause before him, verse 4, and fill my mouth with arguments. Because how could God treat me so bad? How does Jehovah forsake me till I have to scratch myself with a stone? Wow, how? Oh, the book of uh, Lamentations comes to mind. Jeremiah lamented. He struggled with such a concept. If God is good, then why did he step back? Oh, if God is a good God, then why does he like, uh, like not to protect his own? If God is a good God, why does he allow suffering? I would order my cause, Job chapter 23, 4, bef my cause before him and fill my mouth with argument. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. Now, for priors to be answered, I remember how the Holy Ghost made me begin. Think about Jesus Christ as a, as a, as a, as a, as a the green tree, and he, he exemplifies, he lived it out. Daily, he lived out what a child of God should look like. Amen. So think about that now. If that is a daily life lived story, Job is trying to make sense. Why don't I get strength? Jesus was not in the flesh, yet Jesus was revealed Call his name Emmanuel, Yeshua, because he shall save his people from the earth. So he was concealed in the Old Testament. He was concealed from Job, chapter 23, 4. That's why Job wants to appear before his seat and question, have, have, have a conversation. Job is now in a difficult spot. You're not the first. May I help you, baby? May I help you, sir? May I help you, ma'am? You're not the first one upon the planet to hurt. To hurt. You're not the first one up on the planet to go through hard things. You're not, you're, you're not special, baby. You're not, you're not. If Jesus Christ bore the cross, what should you and I do? Uh, how do you think God is going to put oomphs in your belly? How do you think God is going to build integrity on the inside? Smooth sailing? Uh, give you everything you want, when you want, like a spoiled child? 
Uh, do you know him? He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. He was a bruised reed. No wonder John ate him in the wilderness, John the Baptist. There was no comeliness in John. Nobody wanted him. Uh, let's try to finish tonight. I would know the words which he would answer me. Dialogue, Job 23, 5. And understand what he would say unto me. Will he, will, 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 will he plead against me with his great power? Now, this is a gentleman, that, and it could be a lady also, because we're royalty, we're kings and queens, so you must be a gentleman, and you must be a lady. Speaks to nature and characteristics that you, qualities that must be on the inside of us. Gentlemen, ladies, loose terms in modern language. But let's continue. Would he plead against me with his great power? Job has, a, he has an articulation beyond head knowledge here because he knows that God has great power. How do you think Job accumulated all that he had? And then God stripped him because God knows that Job can be trusted. If I strip him, Job won't be dumbfounded. Job won't give up himself, commit suicide, and die. But watch me double his blessings. 2024. Uh, I need more. So let's go, saints of God. I, will he, verse 6, will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. God has the power to crush me as a, as a, as a potter. But no, instead of crushing me, he makes me into another. Have you been born again? Have you been made anew? Hmm? I'm not talking to since you, 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 you came out of the world. You've been in church not to stay, not to stay as you are. You've come as you are, but church is a hospital now. It's an hospital where people come to get well. Don't remain sickly. Don't remain uh, tonight. Let's go. There, there the righteous might dispute with him. So would I be delivered for, forever from my judge? There the righteous. What about the unrighteous? There the righteous might dispute with him. I, all I'm hearing in my hearing in the spiritual realm is, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. Shepherdry, shepherdry. His rod, his staff, his guide in Job. Yea, he takes him out into the field, the field of suffering, the field of anguish, the field that makes you take stone to, to, to soothe your scars or your wounds. What a shepherd is this? The scriptures declare, there the righteous might dispute with him. Oh, my God. You could have an argument in a court environment. Think of that from a the theocratic perspective. Amen. But God, even though it's a theocracy, God is ruler. God is, God, there's nobody else. It's not a democracy where everybody get a vote. God is sovereign, so he has the capacity to rule. He made everything so he can rule over what he made. Nothing is not made without him. Go to John chapter 1. So hear me. Job is saying, there the righteous might dispute with him. Such a creator will allow the creation to come and have a conversation. If we go to Genesis 3, 24, God had a conversation with Adam, Eve, and Lucifer. And then God says, see you. Bye-bye. He put up an angel to protect Eden. You cannot come back here no more. Conversation is over in certain aspect. The conversation moved away from Adam, Eve, even Lucifer, and it then went to the prophetic word, the seed of the woman who was slain before the founding. He now becomes the conversational peace. So from there, God is a chaser. Who is God chasing? Uh, Adam and Eve, much as the son, Cain. And then when Cain killed Abel, then when Enoch, then uh, Eve says, I got another man from the Lord. This time, I got a man from the Lord. She wasn't helping before. But now she comes to a deeper understanding. God, I, by the help of God, I got, so you're, you're disobedient. So you're trying to fix your own life. You try to do your own thing. Can't work. You need the help of God. So Eve recognized it. That, I don't have time for Genesis there, but let's continue. Amen. Not that I can't teach it. But I, I've got to move as the Holy Ghost is moving me. So hear me. Sister. So then the conversation becomes the man, Jesus Christ. Prophetically, down every generation, God is having a conversation to try to get Jesus come through Matthew chapter 1, 40 and 2 generations. So when Abel was killed, God has got to look for another way. And Job now is dealing with it in his, in his generation. 
And how many generations are we beyond Job now? We're in 2024. Job has to, Job has to now um, concretely make a sense of his day-to-day -day life and how God fits in it. Not how Job uh, sees it, but how is God fitting in my situation despite all my setbacks, despite all my negativity. There the righteous might dispute with him. So I, I could then go and have a conversation with God. Mm, do you talk with him? So what I so should I be delivered from Eve? So should I be delivered from forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for being my director tonight. Because I have my own thoughts. But when I every day I try to live and let God be the thought and be God who lives through me. And imagine now if I skip what God brought me to, because I came into the pulpit, knowing the lights this is Psalms 23. But in my turning, I went to Job 23. The eyes, I have to apologize. I have to, Father, forgive me, Lord. Because it was an eye, Pastor Moran, that went there. It was the Holy Ghost that used my physical hands and went there. Because I thought I was going to Job 23. I have my own will. But the Holy Ghost who's living through me went to Job because he needs you to get this, this in your spirit tonight. Let's finish. Uh, I thought I was going to read it all, but the Holy Ghost just showed me. Verse 7, verse 8, verse 9. There the righteous might dispute with him. So you have a right to pray. You have a right to even mm, and, 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 and be, uh, have a pity party like a child. You have all that. That's in your own will. But then what does the sovereignty, the will of God say? Job says here now, verse 7, there the righteous might dispute with him. God is open. Again, I'm going to tell you about Lot and Abraham a little bit. God is open for you to come to him. But again, know your place. Why do we have trouble in church across the land, the planet earth that is? Because we have people rise up thinking they know better than God, than what God is doing even through his servant. What a, what a, what a, what a kitty wampus thing this is. How could that be conceived in any logical even thought? How could the thinker think such a thought? That what God did is not good, but they know better. Yes, there's a better connection with God. I'm trying to get there tonight. I'm going to get there by the Holy Ghost. So God is open for you to come and have a conversation. But I can remember that you're the clay. You're not the potter. There the righteous might dispute with him. God is willing. Remember how this chapter, this book started. The sons of God was invited to have a, have a tea. Come for tea and crumpets. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever. From my judge, Job is, Job is a part of the righteous. He was living righteous. He, he goes and says, God, really? Are you not considerate of my plight? Job has now lost all his family in one day. His, his wealth, his livestock, down to physically, even his wife. You better be careful. Job says, naked I came. I know who gave me everything. I shall keep my integrity. People box you in and force you into a, into a position that is not God. Hey, uh, I have a friend that we'll call Paula Tricks. In church, not, not politics, Paula Tricks. Polly, many tricks. Follow me tonight, saints. Job now is articulating. He's trying to make a sense of his situation much more when he comes before the righteous judge. Behold now, think of when you have a court case and you go, and now it's your turn to go in before your honor. Behold, verse 8, I go forward, but he's not there. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. She's been going everywhere. Uh, and backward. I went forward, nothing. Backward, nothing. But I cannot perceive him. Perception now is even like a shadow. And it's not a physical thing. Perception. Sha. You shall know him by the nail prints in his hand. Have you got a glimpse of him since? Since you came out of the wilderness of your experiences, or some of us are still in our wilderness, that's a beautiful place. It's a land between death and the living. Egypt is death. Canaan is the land of the living, the land of multiplicity and plenty, new beginnings. But if you're in the wilderness of your experiences, there's a now or not yet. Keep going. Uh, uh, Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments last night. Hear me, saints. So verse 9, on the left hand, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. 
on the left hand. He went forward, he went backward. Then he tried the left. Uh, where he doth work. God works. Are you a worker? Hmm? Are you a worker? You think I'm talking about your natural bread. Jesus, who is God, said, don't worry about that. Jesus says, I must do the work of him that sent me thee while it is day. What is the work? The evangelism of the unsaved. That's the work God, Jesus said I came to do. That's the need to go through Samaria. Uh, I watched... Uh, uh, tonight, Pastor Morant is getting there. So continue with me. But I cannot behold him, verse 9. He hideth himself. We sing it in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love. And he covers. Job said, God hides himself from me. That's why I'm suffering. Why would a God who's good, why who is a God, he's a, he is a bread of life. He is a, he's the first and the last. He is a, uh, let me get to the great I am statements tonight. Help me, Holy Ghost, to get there quickly. Amen. I'm going to tell you who he is, saints of God. Why would a God who is all these things, amen, saints, why would a God who's all these things and hide, hide himself from you and me? Mm, why does he do that? He, does he not care? Is he not an Abba Father? I could throw them off repetitively, but there's a reason why. Amen. I need to get there to deliver you this package, saints of God. It's a package. And Job struggled with it. He struck, struggled with it profusely. We'll get to there. Profusely. He says, verse 9, but I cannot behold him face to face. In all of his glory, Moses, you're worthy. Come up. God will never invite you like a Mephibosheth if you're not worthy. If you've been invited to come up on the mountain, you better, you better mind sharp. You're going to behold him. Because to go up in God, you're going to see things, that Paul says, that should not be uttered. You can't stay down in the valley. He's, a song comes to mind, but just park that song. He, he moved me, part the song, but I'm quitting here. But I cannot behold him, Job 23, verse 9. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot. It's interesting how the psalmist ends up. He hideth himself on his right hand. Now, whenever you see that term in Scripture, right hand, it means authority, power. So when God hides himself in his authority and power, that means he's ready to move. He's ready to fight. So your pain and your struggling, baby, is not to death. And even if it's the death, he can raise you from the dead. Think of Jesus. So God bless you tonight. Psalms 23. Psalms 23, as I finish, it marries or mirrors tonight's lesson, as I just shared it with you quickly, out of the book of um, Job 23. And then we'll pivot over into the book of Joshua chapter 6. Thank you for being here. Again, even to our online worshipers and to those, the very last one who shall view and extract something out of the, the anointing through Pastor Moran tonight. God bless you. Amen. Restoring my soul. Restoring my soul. Restoring my soul. That's found in verse 3 and verse 1. Shepherd, shepherd, shepherd. Quickly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. New King James Version. I read many multiplicity of versions. Right down to even the me amplified New Living Translation. The Messenger. New King James. King James. I read about five, six different versions. Amen. And if I go to deeper study, sometimes at least ten. So hear me, saints of God. The word, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Think of Job now. Amen. Think of Job is the one reading, rehearsing these psalms. We know Job lived a long time before David penned these psalms. But it didn't change God from being a shepherd even in Job's time. Job was in the nomadic time. Think of when Abraham was around. That's when Job was around in in juxtaposition, he was contemporaneously. So as, as Abraham is over here, going from, from Haran to Ur of the Chaldees, so God had Job over in another area of Mesopotamia, which is modern day Middle East. Think of Iraq, Iran, um, uh, you know, all that area. Uh, Babylon. Uh, there's, let's continue. So again, Job didn't have this particular Psalms 23, but he had the shepherd there. That's why I took you into the inner veil where Job was trying to get back into the innermost. God, why did you forsake me? Why did you allow all this pain and anguish to come against my soul? Do you not care? Do you not love me? Think of a Jesus' cry and Jesus' pain. My God, my God, why? So I continue tonight. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. Shepherd, shepherd. Let's see what shepherds say. And then I'll finish at verse 3 when it comes to restoring my soul. Because a shepherd has a responsibility. Shepherd. Shepherds are not passive toward their flock. Think of Job. I, I, perce I Perception, but then is hidden on my right hand. I told you right hand now is power, strength. Authority is not speaking about your physicality so much. Physical right hand. It's because, again, predominantly, woman is not stronger than men. Predominantly. Despite modernity and all that's going on. So predominantly, God made the human physical male species or male anatomy stronger than woman. And so let's move now. And predominantly, we have a lot of right-handed men more than left-handed. Think of that. Amen? Yes. So it speaks to where you can... Um, macho, macho man, uh, Randy Savage, Hulk Horgan, you know, these pythons, what they're going to do to you. And think of uh, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. It's with a, a right hand, power, strength. So it's not talking about the physicality so much, but what's behind the physical uh, presence of a right hand. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, scepter, authority, king, shepherd, right hand, staff. So continue, saints of God. Shepherds are not passive. Uh, sit passive, don't know what to do. Get up out of your doldrums and speak the word. I, I stood before an audience on Sunday and said, it's all you need to do, whether you're saved or unsaved, is to uh, have faith, believe, and obey pastor. Say what I'm going to say. And some of us, it's like, hey, hey, do I say like Lot's wife? Get out of your doldrum of yourself. Have faith and obey, and the rest is going to be history. You're going to be delivered. Uh, the word, there's a word for it. There's a word for it. So shepherds are not passive. The shepherd of this house is trying to help you. The shepherd of the house is preparing the house for when it's going to burst at the seams, and we won't have room 24-7. Uh, if you don't get up, somebody else is going to get up. If you don't find yourself... Somebody else on the outside, even living under the bridge, which is Scarlet Lawrence, the, the bridge that goes over the Humber River between uh, Western Road and Scarlet. There's a bridge. I'm sure somebody lives there in the name of Jesus Christ. They have become scavengers. They're looking for bread, and the bread is in 1831, and the bread can't flow out because some of us keep our mouth shut. But in the name of the, in the shepherds are not passive. The thing by here is to stroke you and say you're doing well. If you're doing well, yes. But hurry up. You're supposed to produce offsprings. She begets she. Oh, God. Lambs are oh, tonight. Shepherds are not passive toward their flock. They lead. They tend. They feed. They protect. They nurture. One adjective, two, three, four. Just five adjectives. It doesn't mean that's all that is within the, with, within the auspices of a shepherd. But think of it. The psalmist says, shepherds are not passive. This is a derivative from verse 1. Shepherds are not passive. To what he can't sit still about. And I see the wolf from afar. Watchmen and those sound the alarm. They're, they lead. They tend. They feed. They protect. They nurture. They provide everything for those in their care. They provide everything. Paul to Timothy, two weeks ago, Evangelist Selena. They provide everything. I'm not a hired uh, shepherd, under shepherd. You didn't hire me. God hired me, so I trust him. Holy. Praise God. And anybody won't hear this under shepherd. I, know, I have to, the Bible said, even walk far from you. Uh, you know, ready for this truth in church. But we're going to see. You think it's, a, it's that God is mocked. God is a novice. You want things to up, become operative in your life, but you won't be disciplined to do the things that God required. So for the word to become operative and produce fruits in your life. Tonight, verse 3, and then I quit. He restores my soul. Shepherds, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm going to deal with the soul. But he leads me in the path of righteousness for whose name's sake? For Morant? Huh? For Lewis? For Blade Grove? Huh? For Mother St. Clair? God rest her soul? For Zeppelin Shepherd? Think you belong to yourself and think it's all about you. Self-centeredness is killing churches. But watch God. There's going to be a glory because there's, just like the day of Pentecost, the church is going to be glorified to go up. Think God is a fool. I'm not a fool either. The church of Jesus Christ, the apostolic faith, those who are called out by him to him and are plugged in to the chief cornerstone, it's going to be glorified before the rapture comes. I'm not, don't be afraid of even the antichrist. Don't you know who's in you? 
The Bible says, restore my soul. Sometimes I'm passionate. However it comes out, Jeremiah says, I can't. I'm going to shut my mouth. He would, I saw a video yesterday, or maybe it's earlier today. There was a garbage truck in New York on the main, one of the main streets caught on fire. People walk by like they don't care still. They're just going about their lives. That's how that's a, we become so zombie -ic. We've turned so zombies. We, we, we are just existing. We're not living. So, woo. And the man who was driving the garbage truck, he got out. He opened the back door because he don't want his wisdom. He opened the back where you put, you know, the, so the, the, at least the air and the, the fire and the flames would escape. Because if he keeps it closed, imagine combustible and a, a bomb. So he opens it and he steps around and he's trying everything. Maybe he's already called 911. But people are just going about there. Da, 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 da. Huh? There's a reason. That's where that's coming from. But the enemy is trying to steal it. But it's going to come back. There's a reason for that, for that combustible fire, saints of God. Amen. As the day of the Pentecost. So it's going to be in the season. God doesn't have to defend himself. But no bride is, is raptured. And the word rapture, I mean, it's, it's caught away like the songs of Solomon. Raptured and having grapes and seeking my beloved. No bride goes down tattered. Oh, but God in this season. There was a spiritual weariness... Oh, God. And I heard somebody talked about it today with everybody who's a celebrity, even an athlete. Because they've reached the zenith of life in the natural. And when they get to that spot and no, no, no drugs, no sex, no alcohol, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. None of these things become satiable, satisfies. So think of people like a Michael Jackson. And, and like even uh, the gentleman was talking about, even a Robin Williams, a comedian. Remember him? More Midi. They, they reach the zenith on top. And, and they now become empty. Why? Restoring my soul. Think of a Job as we're finishing with David. Restoring my soul. Verse 3. Shepherd. Shepherd. Only the shepherd could do it. If you seek your care or to look after your cares in a natural, much less psychological Amphetamines, um, psychology, or be a witchcraft, huh? seance, hmm? become a history major, become a medical. It's not, it's not the gun or the tool, it's the person behind it. There is a spiritual weariness that only God can address. God speaks to the depths of the heart. He brings peace in the mind. He satisfies the deepest longings of the soul. Say it one more time and I quit. Go to, jo uh, go to jo Genesis, Joshua chapter 6 with me. Say it one more time. He restores our soul. Because I told you, from go again, I'm asking you again to go to Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to meet you there shortly. Restoring our soul. Because once we were cut off in our first Adam in the garden, our soul now becomes empty and void. And think of Job. He's asking, Job 23, God, why am I such? Where are you? We've been finishing the month of March fasting. Lord, I will. I am panting as a heart panted after the water brooks. So doth my soul panteth of thee, O Lord. That's Psalms 42. But saints of God, restoring my soul, there's a spiritual weariness that only God can address. God's, God speaks to the depths of the heart. God brings peace to the mind. He satisfies the deepest longings of the soul. Ah, okay. But you don't want a relationship with God. And you know better than God not to or order your steps in God, even through his word and through his servant. And you wonder why you're so famished. You wonder why your soul is so meager. Tonight, I trust that you're in Joshua chapter 6. But I'm going to give you one more verse before I pivot and come with you to Joshua 6. You don't have to go there, but I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, 24. So he, God, that's why you become so empty. And then God is, 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 is bringing satisfaction to your soul through the man Jesus Christ. He becomes the, the bomb in Gilead. He becomes the, the satiable on your palate. 
Just like he, he got vinegar to drink, he will give you pouring wine. Genesis 3, 24. God had to do it because if he didn't do this, what I'm going to read now, man would be eternally damned, eternally stuck in the, in the defeated position they were because of sin. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and the flaming sword. And then I tell you something, things don't happen just because they happen or just because of by chance or luck. You remember when I took it to that garbage and the truck and fire and I was going there thinking I'm coming back to something. But the Holy Ghost parked me and park that thought, the bus, the, the, the garbage truck on fire, to bring me here. And to let you see that you cannot fight against God and win. You can't. I don't care who you are. Think of Balaam that was, that was, that was levied. He was paid to come and curse Israel. I don't care who you are. You can't fight against God's will and win. So God, Genesis 3, 24. So God himself, Elohim. Jehovah drove out the man and he placed that God have security guard. I love Elder Sherlin. Elder Sherlin said to us on Sunday in Sunday school, Egypt didn't have HR department. So you go to Pharaoh, go to the HR department and see if you could get through. God could do what he wants to do because he's a shepherd. Oh, God. So he drove out the man, the man. Notice he didn't say the man and woman. Because both, I told you from the study of Genesis, now we're in Joshua, that when God made man, he made them male and female. So that when you see the word man here, it means positive male, negative female. They come together, produce offsprings, children. So don't worry about the gender, gender identity today. That's, that's crap. It's garbage. Leave it. Don't have to argue it. Because again, God made mankind in his image, male and female. So God is not... Uh, there's, there's, you know, in, even in the scripture, there's a, there's a, the, God is normally referred to as him and strength because those are masculine terms speaking to. But there's no, we can't say there's any femininity because there's no male or female in spirit. But there's a, there's a feminine aspect or softness to God. For God so loved the world. So it's, it's in God, there's a multiplicity of not personalities, but he has various um, Degrees of himself, he released anything he wants to be. And so when God made man, he's, the word man in Genesis 3.24 is talking about Adam and Eve. It was Adam that named his wife Eve. Amen. So when God made man, he made them Adam and called them Adam, male, female. Both of them were Adam. So tonight, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims. Fire! You can't come here. Think of even uh, Lot uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire. I'll say, amen. And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Jesus Christ had to be protected because Jesus Christ, the tree of life, I am, didn't come in flesh yet to die. So you can go and have access to him until he became a man. God bless you. Uh, follow me tonight in the book of Joshua chapter 6. I trust that you're still with me. God uh, speaks uh, eloquently through Pastor Morant. I'm just a body, and I ask him all the time to use me. Uh, I'm going to sing the song. You stay in the background. I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my eyes, my voice, so you could use me as you please. I have emptied out my cup so that you can fill it up. Now I'm free and I just want to be available to you, Lord. I'm available to you. Thy will, my will, I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show someone the way. Please enable me to say, 
my storage is empty and I am available to you. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hand, my eyes, my mouth, my voice, and you could use them as you please. I have emptied out my car <laughs> so that you can fill, fill it up. Lord, now I'm free, free of myself. I want to breathe. God can't empty me. I have to empty me. I want to be available to you. I'm available to you, oh my, <laughs> I give to you, I will do obedience, what you say do, use me Lord, oh yes, to show someone the way, and enable me to say, my storage is empty. I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be the cry of all of our hearts. God bless you tonight. Thank you for helping me. This has to be personalized. I can't do it for you. Jesus Christ will not come and do it for you. The Bible says die daily. Give up your own. So as you're with me in the book of Joshua chapter 6, I, I've got a lot of notes, but I'm trying to make sure God guides me tonight. I want you to understand, amen, even if I go someplace, remember where I, where I left you last week? I left you by repeating the book of Numbers 14 a little bit, because I wanted to know, there it is, and I even from all my, I spent about maybe an hour preparing, amen, as an introduction to go into the study of God's Word, and not that we weren't studying God, we were already in the vein of who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is in the pain of, of a Job. He showed up and bore it like Job. Jesus Christ is in the cherubims. Now, he's not a cherubim. He is not himself uh, the one that stood there, but he gave the instructions. Think right arm, authority, right arm. Their cherubims don't obey him because, again, the tree of life, eternal life, can, can, can't touch this. Uh, Jesus Christ is in Abraham when he's trying to uh, have a, an articulate conversation with God concerning his nephew Job that he should have left home. And the left home is not his house where he went to sleep that night. It's to, he was told to leave everything back, only him and his wife. Because can I tell you what God uses? God uses the male and the female, man. He needs the positive and the negative. Because again, God needs to produce offspring. Every generation has to produce a seed. Thank God for Vincent Moran. Thank God for Zeppelin Shepherd. Thank God for Mother Mother Jones. I don't know Reverend Jones' father. But I thank God I was among the believers when I sat with her and I ate with her. And I saw her in her, in her um, um, my God, demonstration of being a mother and being the, the natural birth mother of Reverend Jones. I was there. I, I was, I ate with her. I saw when Mother, uh, Mother Moet, I saw uh, that Reverend Jones wasn't a figment of imagination. No, is Pastor Moran. God birthed us in time for such a time as this. Just like he said, Mary, it's your turn. It's your turn. Joseph, just behave yourself. I'll see you after. It's not your turn, Joseph. You don't have to help with the sperm. I will do it. I will impregnate her. I wish you were, oh God, I was at a service on Sunday. I was at a service on Saturday, forgive me. <laughs> because we, we, we missed the revelation of what God is trying to do in this house. The revelation came when we opened up Sunday school. Amen. Because even when I got to the word, I released the word, didn't have time to extrapolate it or to, someone would say exergy, which is just leave that Bible study aside. Amen. When I was, we were opening up a Sunday school, because there was only two verses, St. John 3, uh, 3, 16 and 17. The Lord led me to go pull out Joseph, that he was 17, and he had a dream. Uh, please stay with me, because I trust what God is doing through Pastor Moran tonight. Remember, I've already, long before, I even knew myself, God, ha, ha, sha, purpose for me to be the pastor of this church. 
and I'm going to fulfill my assignment. So follow me. Here is God. Joseph, I'm going to show you where I'm taking you. And I'm going to show you the start, much less the finish. But the in-between process, jo think of a job tonight. Joseph, I'm not going to tell you. So there's a land in between. God will tell you where he's taking you. And he'll show you how he's going to start that process. Amen. But, but again, he won't show you all that you have to go through to achieve where he's taking you, Joseph. And then when I, when I finish with that, even brief, if Andrew Selena was here, could verify. Amen. That's what the Bible says. You say amen if you agree, if the person is speaking truth or not. So then the Holy Ghost took me from there to Luke chapter 1, uh, Luke chapter 2, when Gabriel showed up to Mary. And the Bible says, hallelujah, when Mary released the word, yes, when Gabriel entered into her. And we're not talking, hallelujah, we're not talking human sexuality there was a word released into Mary and it, she became pregnant with hope and beyond hope she became pregnant with the Lord's Christ so what am I trying to say God will release his word are you in position to receive it so from a Joseph to a Mary that's how they both and remember we talked about Judges 3 3 24 tonight Huh? God made a man, and God always have to use a man and a woman to produce offspring. And if he does that in the natural, how much more the spiritual? So we're going to see tonight, amen, saints of God, again, what God is up to. God's people? Ha ah, Can I tell you? I've been telling you this in my studies. When God delivered his people, where did he take them to? The base of Mount Sinai. He first, he first has to do it with the leader. Thank God for my mentor, the patriarch of this house. He has to do it, prepare the leader, and then those, the leader will then take those, those who will obey him and listen to him, and take them through the same process, which is the purging of themselves. So follow me now. So when God is doing that, God raised up Moses, you know the story. Then God sent back Moses because Moses is now prepared to lead. And Moses takes the people where? To Sinai. And then what does God do? God tabernacles. God comes and gives them his commandments. He makes a covenant with them, which is a, think of a marital relationship. They become one now. So as a nation, what is God trying to do? Produce Jesus. He's trying to make the Messiah be birthed in a nation. And it's the same thing in the spiritual realm that God is trying to do through you and me, this house. So when you follow me, the problem then was it was being aborted along the way. And I won't ask you to come with me, but stay where you are in jo Joshua chapter 6. And I know I'm giving you a lot. But again, if you're missing any nuggets tonight, you can go back and watch it again. But be in position right now. Amen. Be in position. I sat in the front row and Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Jones taught. It came out of his mouth into me. Uh, so it's not me. And I surrender myself another time to God tonight. I said, I'm giving back to you. You stay in Joshua 6. But Numbers 14 says, because you think the problem is, is, is God or what God is trying to do through the leader. The problem is the people because they won't, they won't walk in obedience. So listen, because again, the longer you're not in, in, congruence, in congruency with God, the longer you're not lined up with what God is trying to do, the, the longer the process takes. Amen. Think of what I just told you. When God brought Israel out, it was a Moses. God brought Israel out and they're at Sinai. And then God says, okay, Time to go into the land. Look what happened. Uh, Numbers chapter four, 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses. Lord God. I'm in the book of the Joshua 6. There's, I'm trying to go somewhere tonight. So they murmured against the leader Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we would have died in the land of Egypt, or would, have, uh, would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land, think of Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, Canaan, just on the brinks of it, to fall by the sword, verse 3, Numbers 14, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return into Egypt. Now, my God, there could not be a greater atrocity than this. Because who delivered them? God. And they're saying, God, what you did. They, so they, they're, they're, they're not of a discrediting God. They're, 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 they're saying God is dead. They're, um, they're, they're humiliated. It's not a, they're, discredit, humiliation doesn't describe it. They're saying God is impotent. He's dead. So even the God that brought them to this point to have this conversation is dead. What kind of nonsense is that? Oh, the journal would say Egypt didn't have an HR. God didn't ask the HR department in Egypt to let them go. Please stay with me. So again, God now... That's the brinks where they were. And so Moses had to die because Moses is the one that gave them a law. The, the, the law says you're a sinner. 
what I just read, Numbers 14. You can't go through into the promise yet. So there has to be a process of repentance. Think of the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. As the nation, corporately, as the nation, corporately, so individuals that make up the body of Christ corporately now. Amen. So as God did it with dramatize and lived it out daily through the nation of Israel, it's the same thing that we're doing because the Bible would say about the nation of Israel that there was church in the wilderness. And follow me, saints of God. So God now, you remember last week I told you I had to circumcise them, Joshua chapter 5. There's some things in our lives that must be cut away, Bethel. In order to experience the, 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 the new beginning, in order to experience the overflow, in order to experience the Deuteronomic, Deuteronomistic blessing, De Deuteronomy 32, in order to experience the abundance of God and the fullness of God, there must be some incision, a cutting away of ourselves. And that could only happen when I, oh God, God, I will. We have came through a month of fast. I will, I will. God won't do it. And God can't do anything till you Die to yourself. And so when that happens, then they're going through the Jordan and baptize. Stay with me. Then they're taken through the Jordan River and they're baptized. So as the nation came through the, through the Red Sea, they were baptized in the wilderness on, onto Moses. So God did the same thing with Joshua. They were, went through the, they, two different times. First time they took up the stones as a memorial. And another time, when we read last week, they took up the stones as a memorial for the children to remember, the next generation. Because if they don't know where they're coming from, they, even social media becomes an issue for them. Because they don't have the mental capacity to give back to They don't have no inner virtual strength to experience and to stand in the midst of difficulty and, 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 and don't flinch. The Bible says now, saints of God, stay with me. The law cannot bring anyone into the promise except in Christ's fulfillment. So where was Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ wasn't in the flesh, but Jesus Christ is Yahweh. Or let me leave Yahweh alone. Jehovah, relational. He comes and he speaks to Joshua. Go with me to Joshua chapter 5, 2, if you're there with me. Amen. It came to pass. I'm reading Joshua 5, 1. Now we, we, we have a bridge to go forward in our study. Joshua chapter 6. So it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan westward, and all the king, kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan. You see, the, the, the fame of who? Israel or Israel's God went ahead of them. So they're already victorious even before they entered the land. So the issue is now, why can't they go forward? Because there's some things that must die or be cut away. Amen. Much less you have to get rid of the blood. Amen. Blood sacrifice. When, when they were told to circumcise everyone under 20 years old. Amen. I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I want to get to verse 2. Stay with me. Stay with me. What happens now? They go into the water to purify themselves and to wash away the blood. Uh, it's it's not a physical thing I'm trying to bring to your attention. I'm talking to you what God has done to us in the modernity since Calvary 2,000 years ago. Uh, when the blood was shed, the life is in the blood. Amen. Praise God. So that's why you can't eat the blood because, oh God, that's another thing. But amen, the life is in the blood. And when Jesus laid down his life now, he then out of the side, he was pierced. Out come blood and water. So you're now having the blood covering the, uh, and the water cleanses you. And you then move on, the Bible says, to perfection. You move into your tomorrow, the new beginning that you have through baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. So stay with me, saints of God. Joshua chapter 5, verse 2. Uh, I'm trying to get to where the Bible says the Lord's captain, the commander of the Lord's host showed up. Don't worry, stay with me. We're going to get there. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's go, actually, forgive me. Go to Joshua 5.14. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Keeping me, Greek, me, Holy Ghost. Joshua 5.14. The Bible says, and he said nay. I'm reading. So imagine if you didn't read all of chapter 5. I'm giving you a background to lead into chapter 6, which is Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. But some things must take place before you go into Jericho. Otherwise, Jericho walls will not fall. What is your Jericho's in your lives now? Huh? Is it relationships? Is it sicknesses? What is your walls that you cannot get down or tear down? Um, I told you a couple of weeks ago, the sick list is too long. Oh my God, healing can't be in the room and we're sick. What it says that either God is not real, his power is not efficacious, or we don't believe. It could be one or the other. It can be both. Come on, stay with me. So Joshua chapter 5, verse 14. 
And he said, now God is having a cup. Oh, God, there it is again. You remember I told you Moses and, uh, Lord, let's part Moses. You remember we began in Job 23, Job is having a conversation with God. And then I took it to Psalms 23, David is having a conversation with God. Every man in his generation, and that term man I just used here, is not speaking just of the male gender, man or woman. So every, every human being born of a woman who is a few days in full of trouble, you have to go through a process in your generation. So Joshua now, he then knows there's a battle ahead of him which is Jericho. And he now is confronted by whom? The Lord himself. Oh, no wonder Nebuchadnezzar says, oh, come on, I put three guys in the fire. How come there's a fourth? Ah, the preacher touched it on Saturday. Hey, yes, I have to park that. And yes, thank you for taking back the Holy Ghost. Hear what the preacher said on Saturday. And I wanted to release it earlier. But the preacher, and I, he's going to be here. I'm, I invited him into our men's meeting. Bishop is already okay with it. Hear me say to him. The preacher said on Saturday, we, you pack for work in the morning. You pack for work because he's talking about atmosphere, atmosphere, to build up an atmosphere when you come to church and nothing good happened at church today. And we come to church when we want, how we want, la 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 la, and we want a blessing. So the preacher said, you pack for, to get to, you pack your lunch, you, you make sure the gas is in the car, everything to get to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. But when it comes to church, and then you show up when you want it with your bad spirit and your bad attitude and your bad behavior and you want a blessing. You, you become a hindrance to God's healing while to flow. So please stay with me. Here is Joshua. He's getting ready to conquer the, the, the front, the gate into Canaan, which is Jericho. And God showed up because his people were covered and prepared through the process which I just walked you through. 9-10. Oh my God. 9-11. Yes, 9-11, it's emergency. Come on, saints of God. Stay with me. Hear me, saints. Joshua now is now ready. Think of, he has become strategic. He has a general commander, a man, a captain of, the, of his army in a natural. Joshua now gathers all the elders and, 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 and the men of war. He's making sure the army is prepared and ready. He's now getting ready to go against Jericho. But Thank God. Remember when David lost everything in Ziklag and he had to go back and say sorry to God? And when he went back to God, then God gave him permission to recover. So Joshua, in his wisdom, he didn't go ahead in his own natural inclination. Joshua submitted himself and he went to God. And God showed up. Who's God? God is Jesus. Amen. He was in the world and not of the world. And the world didn't know him. He made the world. He was, God was in Christ, reconciled to bring back the world to himself. And so before Jesus became flesh in, as a man to die, a lamb. My lamb. Jesus always came to the planet. So if you go back to me, with me, to Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, he said, Nay, but as captain of the Lord of the as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. I pray he comes in your house tonight. And I'm not talking about your natural house only. Because if God ever showed up in your heart, if God ever showed up in your body, you shall receive healing. Much as your house now is transformed. No demon, no duppy, no, 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 no even financial problem will be dismissed. When God shows up in you, everything that is not of him must leave. God, light can't come and darkness is around still. I need somebody to believe him tonight. I need somebody to praise him tonight. I need somebody to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He was nailed to the cross for you and me. Uh, it's another Easter bun and cheese, fish and dumpling, and Milo and egg. Uh, can, you better behave yourself. Do you see what the Prime Minister, uh, the President of the United States did over the weekend? Are you paying attention to the time that we're living in? You better say hurry up because the world is getting so dark. He made it not an Easter egg, fine, hide the egg like Obama would do. And Obama was one of the worst presidents. You continue to look after the flesh and you miss it because he was black. Oh, yeah, everybody's Obama. The Bible says discern. Pay attention to spirit. His policies and procedures were the worst. He didn't care about the black people. Mr. Biden made, made Easter Sunday or Easter weekend a transgender identity weekend. If your belly don't roll and you don't flip, you don't see that the writing is up on the wall, Belshazzar, you're in trouble, Bethel. You better fix your life quickly because he who is coming to Joshua, he's going to come back in Bethel. Hear me, Joshua 5, 4. Pray for Pastor Moran. Pray for Pastor Moran. The revelation is coming. We haven't reached no revelation yet, but keep praying for Pastor Moran. The Bible says, he said, nay, but as captain of the Lord's host of the Lord, am I now come? I've brought into a conversation that's been going on for a while. Here is Jesus Christ, Theophany, showed up as a captain of the Lord's host. He is the, the captain and says, Joshua, don't worry, I'm with you today. Let's continue, saints of God. So that now what? 
makes the promises available to go into the land and everything that God is going to do for his people. You know, it's history. It's about 3,000 years ago. It happened. Come on, can you put a praise on it right there, saints of God? Come on, somebody just clap your hands tonight. If you're with me, if you're with me, saints of God. Somebody, come on, just put your hands together for God. Come on, clap your hands. Let's, it's, it's wonderful. I love God. I love his word. It, put, it puts so much vim and vigor into my spirit. I eat, sleep this stuff. It's my, I was put on the planet for this. <laughs> and dare I even challenge you because they say even the Russians are saying they found pamphlets and, and art, art, artifacts from old and they're trying to say that we've been deceived, that we've been deceived. The world is saying Jesus was a certain color skin. It doesn't matter what color skin he is, but amen, amen. They're saying that he's dark skin, amen. He was from the African continent of Africa or he was he was black <laughs> watch God in this season but again don't worry about his physical com complexion Jesus taught in the parables that a man comes in your midst in gay clothing and a man comes in regular clothing you think it's a man in a gay clothing the regular clothing that the problem is both of them come into a church as Jesus taught in the parable or being in the banquet hall and it shows them up in the banquet hall that his heart's not right because some is preferential, some is, is politrix again. Man show up that is poor, eating off of the floor, and Prime Minister Trudeau show up in here. And, ah, Prime Minister, I want to take a selfie with Prime Minister Trudeau. Do you know what the man is doing to this country? Let's continue tonight. Now Jericho was securely, Joshua 6, come on saints, we're setting a platform. Because I... I'm pleased, not because where I'm where I'm at in my time tonight. I'm not concerned about the time. But I'm trying to give you, as the Holy Ghost pushes into me, a platform to prepare you for what's going to happen in chapter 6. Because there I, I don't intend to finish all of chapter, the 27 verses tonight. Because when you get to, if you go to Joshua chapter 6, let's go to verse 22 or 21. Let's look at Joshua 6, 21. They, who's a They. Israel, because the captain of the Lord's host is with them. The Bible says, Joshua 6, 21, and they utterly des destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. Can I take you back in our articulation, not just in the natural, but the spiritual tonight, of what we discussed from Job 23? And even over to Psalms 23, because we talk about if God is our shepherd and God is a good shepherd, how could he treat Job like he did? Job is crying out. I, I, I need to find him and find out why is he so hard on me. Job is trying to find him. Why you treat me so bad, God? What did I do to you? Please follow me. Because again, if that God beat up on Job like that, remember now, think of Joshua. Think of Joshua's people and think of anybody who is not familiar with the God of the Bible and you're brought now into such a relationship with these words. How could God wipe out children, young and old, all the sheep, all the, uh, all the ass, the ox? How could a good God do this? Is it making sense to you tonight? Is God preferential? Is God selfish? Is God... Somebody had wrote a book about him. It's called The Hound of Heaven. The Hound. Think of a hound dog. Elvis Presley sung about it. He's chasing you down. Remember, I gave you that even from Genesis. I gave you that God is after you. He's trying to get back into your heart. But why would a God commit such atrocities? Or let's leave it and don't infuse God into it. But you can't because, again, if you go back to Joshua 6, verse, verse Joshua 5, 14, the Lord's captain of the Lord's host, which is God theophanized in flesh, shows up to fight on Israel's behalf. So you can't take God out of the equation. How come the nation of Israel could do such atrocities? Ain't that's what's going on in, in, in the Middle East right now? Uh, off with all their heads. They should all be destroyed. The Jews, the Jews, the Jews. 
That kind of teaching now is going to take time. So I intended to pick that up in a second portion, but let's continue tonight trying to finish the first portion, but I don't know if we will. But stay with me, saints of God. Let's go back to uh, Joshua 6, verse 1. Our God is unorthodox. He does things strangely. Stay with me. Can somebody say amen if you're there so I can hear you? That you're there even on, on our Zoom platform. Somebody, come on, amen, so I can hear you. You're hearing me at home. Thank you. You see, oh, God has slowed me down here. I don't know where he's going to take me next. I don't want a quiet church. I don't want a church that's docile. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, it came in like a rushing mighty wind. Loud with noise. And look at the descriptive language. Like fire, cloven tongues. Trying to get you to open your mouth and, and your, 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 your victories in your praise. Your victories in your own mouth. But you can't walk in obedience. I trust Job 23, Psalms 23, Genesis 3, 24, Joshua chapter 5, 14, and Joshua 6 will help you tonight. Let me try to get home in 15 minutes. Joshua 6 verse 1. Now Jericho was secretly, well, forgive me, securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Because the, 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 the noise of God and Israel's God got to them. They heard about Israel's God and how awesome he is. And that nobody can stop him. So that's why now they become afraid and they close in the city walls. They had double walls. I hope you know that. Read your Bible. So the Bible says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Because of who? Because of the children of Israel. And who was with the children of Israel? Because of God. The captain of the Lord's, the, the captain of the command of the Lord of hosts. Amen. Let me say it right, saints of God. I don't want to mislead you. Amen. Captain of the host of the Lord. I am. I, there it is. I am. I am I. Am I. Same thing. I am come. So he can come as a captain of the Lord's house. He could come as, as man of ill wilderness. He could come as a man in flesh to die. Jesus could, the I am could do anything he wants. I continue to read tonight. So they, they, sh they, Shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, Thank God that there's a relationship between the leader and God. Now we're going to get into some real studies because I told you, if I've never seen people disrespect leadership in my life. And I've been in church for 40 something years. And walk off like there's nothing and want to continue like your life is ordained by God. And you're ta 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 ta. You, you want to worship, but you have no obedience. I'm going to leave that till Sunday. You want to say you're a worshiper, you're serving God right, but you have no obedience. The Bible says, and the Lord said to Joshua, thank God, I told you through even Moses that God qualifies his leader before he releases them. And I told you a couple weeks ago, like a Jonah, much less even Jesus himself, it was written in the volume of the book for Jesus to come. Then if he's already ordained to come, nobody can stop him from coming. Jonah, you got to go to Nineveh, even if you rebel. And even if you take the wings of the morning and go to the utmost part of the sea, Psalms 139, Joshua 6, 2. So the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. He shall march around the city, all men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Joshua 6, verse 4. I'm going to verse 5, saints. And seven priests shall bear Seven trumpets of ram horns are before the ark, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass that when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, when you hear obedience, order, well, that's another thing. But when you hear, uh, my God, help me, Lord God. Uh, when you hear, verse 5, the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shall, then, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, uh, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Only then, not before. You can make things happen when you want. And now, you think I'm just here to give you head knowledge or information for you could go home and say, okay. Uh, I learned a little things in, 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 in Bible studies tonight. We are trying to extract, we're trying to articulate principles out of the Word of God to apply to your own life. 
Have you any mountains or Jerichos that you can't get through? Have you any double-edged situation, like a scab, even physically, that you can't get over? What kind of situation is presentable like the walls of Jericho was in the natural? We wrestle not against flesh and blood like the children of Israel who dramatize it in the flesh. But we become wrestlers now against spiritual wickedness in high places. What is the Jerichos in your life? The Bible says, Joshua 6, 5, It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast, it shall, it's going to only happen when and thus. It will not happen if you don't obey or do it as I say, thus. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall, that all, watch ya, what a lala in church. What a lala in church. That all the people, because again, these people are dead and gone. Their fate is sealed. There's no repentance in the grave if they didn't fix it before they died. It's you, it's me now, Bethel. And anybody else will hear this servant's voice. God is raising us to be a global end-time ministry. You don't believe it? Watch him in the season. God shall make Bethel reach to the ends of the world. You don't believe it? You think God is a novice? God does not do something. Be careful of small packages. Be careful of what you throw away and think is, ah, nothing or there is just a boy. Amen. If they said that about Reverend Jones, how much more me, his son? But watch him this season as God releases out of the, 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 the womb the original water fountain head of what he's trying to do, beginning from we, the north in Canada. The Bible says uh, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall. Only then will your problem cease to be when you do it God's prescribed way. Because again, Joshua could have had his own strategic methodology how to go against and win the, the city of Jericho. But he submitted to God, and God says, do it this way, sir. Can you obey your pastor? <laughs> then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Only then, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. So God actually goes out of his way to choose absurd means absurd. God goes out of his way <laughs> to choose methods and means that's unorthodox, that don't make sense, that you think... Jesus. Any tactical plans? I'm giving you some of my notes now. Any tactical plans Joshua had in mind are known, strat strategic, how to go against the city. You don't see that on the pages of the Bible. Because Joshua, though he had maybe a plan, and he had to have a plan. No wonder God made me sing that song tonight. I'm giving it back to you. Because it's not my plan. It's not my will. Do you hear these words? Of your Savior up on the cross. And even before he was nailed to the cross, even before he carried it, and thank God he had a buddy, somebody to help him, named Simon. But do you know Jesus, when he was getting ready for the cross, his triumphant entry, the last week of his life, when he was going through the cross experience in Gethsemane, not what I will, but your will, not what I want. I, I could call fire and destroy them like the sons of Zebedee. I could cut off their ears like a Peter, but not, nevertheless, not what I want, Jesus. Jesus said, Jesus said. So Joshua had some tactical plans. He had to have a leader, but he submitted them at the foot of the captain of the Lord's host. So military and psychologically, he was prepared. He was prepared. He had to be prepared. But I'm going to even take it to Gideon, and we can go to other leaders in the Bible. God says, only 300, Gideon, only 300. Lord God, imagine if I was a part of Gideon's generation, and uh, 32,000 qualify, because the, the gospel talks about that Jesus. Now, his life is a gospel, good news. Jesus would say in his dialogue with his audience that a man should count the cost before he goes out to battle. You can't have 10,000, I'm paraphrasing, 10,000 soldiers and you're going up against 100,000. You better count the cost, wave your white flag, sur surrender. Don't, go, don't destroy your, your family, your life, your city, your country, your nation. So, but God's methodology now, and it's different, saints of God. You question even the very leadership of, of, of anything. That means you question God. 
Is, is God right in what he did? Pharaoh in the Ten Commandments says, who's God that we should, I should listen to him and worship him? So even though militarily and psychologically Joshua had to be prepared and ready to go up against, uh, praise God, Jericho, he had to part that. And when the captain of the Lord's host showed up, Joshua said, ah, thank you for loving me, God. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for showing up on time. Because imagine if we went out. Remember Israel did that and they got beaten and beat up? Pretty soon you're going to see after Joshua chapter 6, they got in trouble with Achan, somebody in the camp. God says there's 100% of your wealth. Just give me 10 and you keep 90. God, hey, we have officers in Bethel not paying their tithes. I tell you, I'm not going to teach from this, from this pulpit you. Because you bring it upon yourself. I, Holy Ghost, maybe touch it tonight. God says, just give me 10, you keep 90. Is God's ways past finding out? Is God's methodology too hard? No. Obedience is simple fact for you to be blessed and at peace and sweet rest. I got to get tonight, 930. Give me five minutes of your time. So God promises Joshua the victory and then outlines how to go about it. Amen. Saints of God, we read it. But let's continue tonight. So have you heard of, a, have a, we've never heard such things like this. March around a city. One time for six days. And then the seventh day, seven times. It's crazy. From a military, you know, from a military, militaristic or military perspective, it, it makes no sense. But God's ways is not your ways. Can you be obedient? We can bring it right down to personal, concurrent 2024 matters where Bethel is concerned. You think God is not at working? You don't think, but in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to believe that God always has a plan. Can you trust a plan through God's mouthpiece? You got to believe. And then when you believe, it leads to obedience. Then there's less, less journey to go. 40 days turn into 40 years. Less trouble, less journey, less sweating, less tears. Less anguish because disobedience leads to trouble. So, saints of God, I need you to understand. Amen. Praise God. You remember when God rose up Noah to build? I heard the same preacher talked about it on Saturday. Noah built for 120 years because that ark typified the church, which is the ark and the safety net of God on the day of Pentecost. 120 was in the upper room. So when God, Jew in Noah's generation, saints of God, please stay with me tonight. Amen. There was intense rebellion. The Bible said they were doing everything. Everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes. Everybody, and we're going to get to the book of Judges next. Maybe by the last Tuesday night of this month and then into May, we're into the book of Judges. Amen. Because we're just going to deal with one more chapter after chapter 6. But tonight we're going to finish here and we're going to continue into chapter 6 next week. And we'll see how far we go to the third Tuesday also. Can you imagine? The Bible says people are so aloof to the things of God. That God saw the utter rebellion and God's only conclusion is to wipe them out by flood. So God called Noah. Noah built an ark. Rain wasn't a substance that fell from the sky before that time. Please don't read your Bible. When God opened up, the, not just the diluge, because a mist came out of the ground. Go back to Genesis. But when God opened up the diluge and all the earth uh, crevices released water uh, from the earth, and then the heavens open, it goes beyond Mount Ararat, because that's where the ark and the, the remnants of the ark of Noah is still going to modern-day Turkey, Mount Ararat. Saints! God's methodology, God's ways, it's not for you to know or find out. But trust me, God knows and God has somebody on earth that knows it. He will never share his, 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 his think of John upon his bosom. No wonder God kept John alive for the book of Revelation because everybody else did not have the insight John had. John laid upon Jesus. So people in their, in their, in their, in their humanity wants to take that into another vein and say Jesus was this. You call the Lord's Christ, God, tabernacle and flesh. After a human indecency, lasciviousness, you better watch yourself. I don't care who you are and who for I'm speaking, doesn't matter. You cannot attribute the eternal God who made man in his image, male and female, and turn around and then legalize and say this is okay because Jesus, oh, come on tonight. So within Noah's generation, my God, outward rebellion, so today is no different. 
Amen. And God used Noah singularly as a savior. The Ark of the Covenant. Oh, there it is. But I have to come down. I can't keep pushing higher tonight because time is up. The Ark of the Covenant, tabernacle in Noah. So when Noah made a natural ark, <laughs> the Bible says he, God told him to pitch it within and without. But the real pitching was the presence of God. Oh, Jesus tonight. So not just that, and I told you about Gideon. But let me tell you, I'm going to finish here. Thank you for your time. 9.35. I'm going to finish with 1 Corinthians, and we'll pick it up next week. God bless you. I could teach till 2 a.m. in the morning. But do we have the application? We might get, Paul says, much, much learning or much, yeah, ever learning and never come into the knowledge of the truth. We've been in church for 40 years. And we are, we are disobedient as a bat. Let me finish with 1 Corinthians. Amen. This is not, you might think even, oh, it's a negative connotation. And I'm not afraid to speak negative. Because again, if the word is not for you, leave it. And I know if it comes out of my mouth, there's somebody that needs it. Everybody's walking upright in Bethel. If you need, why do you think the glory has not fell yet? Because too much self. Self is a hindrance to the glory of God. Let's go, saints. He will not share his glory. Tonight I finish because Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 22. Uh, let me go back even to verse 18 and I quit. Thank you for your patience. The media team, threefold tonight. God bless you. you know. Look at Paul's strategic spiritual revelation of the ways of God compared to the ways of man. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18, for the preaching of Jesus Christ, the cross, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish, foolishness. Ah, God, he was nailed to the cross for me. On the cross crucified for me, he died. How could God reconcile the world through a man on a cross? For the, it's foolishness. It don't make sense. It's incongruent. It's insipid. If it's on your tongue, your palate, ah, no wonder nobody People in, 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 in certain contexts don't want it. For the preaching of the cross to them, to them, to them. So there's them. If you perish, that's why you perish, because you don't want it. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, the letter was written to Christian folks in church, in Corinth, and anybody else that reads it. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Calvary. For it is written, he pulls out an Old Testament revelation and show the fullness because the Old Testament is a schoolmaster leading to the full manifestation of even Jesus Christ himself in flesh. Paul says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, amen, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Uh, where are they? Where is the Aristotle's? Uh, the Elian Musk of this world, trying to make a difference. Where is everybody today? Where is the wise? And, where, and, and, will, and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of these worlds? This, this where Paul is challenging, as the Holy Ghost is leading him, even the modern day skeptics of his time. Because if you go to the book of Acts, amen, he talks to them in Moore's Hills. Think of Socrates and, and Aristotle and and all these great men of the past from a Greek perspective, much as the Roman military arm. Where is the wise, he said? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world, saints of God, as we're closing tonight? For after that is the wisdom of God. For after, verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God now is Jesus in flesh. Ha, I hope you capture that. Because he became, he, God tabernacle, the, he became a tabernacle in flesh on earth that, the, that he, the, the, the presence of the Father dwelt in. No wonder the physical temple had to be destroyed. Uh, bless you, bless you, these three. God bless you tonight. We're quitting. For he says in verse 21 again, for after that in the wisdom, in the wisdom, God's revelation, God being revealed in flesh. For after that in the wisdom Help me tonight, of God. The world by wisdom knew not God. So there's a wisdom and revelation of God compared to what the world thinks. And the Bible says it's, it's, it's like a juxtaposition. It doesn't work. You can't compare eternal things uh, over against natural things. 
Paul says again, 21, for after that, in the, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. Takes a shot at his own people. Himself is a Jew. The Greeks seek after wisdom. And again, he's speaking from an art, from a from an articulate, even philosophical perspective, addressing the, the skeptic and the naysayers, not on the street, because think of Jesus' life. Those who were on the street, they came to him. But the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, the, the, the uh, uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, all of these, they, they, they forbade him. So it's on that level now God is writing through Paul to address the skeptics, not these same gentlemen I described, which are religious leaders, even though there's new ones, but Paul says, for the Jews require a sign till this day, and the sign, the word became flesh, and they miss it still. But don't worry, one day they're going to behold Jesus and accept him. The Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom, Greek philosophy, wisdom. But we preach Christ as the only way to the Father. He says, I am the door. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So whether you're a Jew or you're Greek, you accept the gospel of Jesus Christ through Jesus. You accept the gospel through Jesus Christ. You are now empowered by God, and the wisdom of God is in you. That's why you're accepted. And finally, verse 25, because the foolishness of God, hear me, Bethel, is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So Joshua March around six times for six days, one time per day. And the seventh day, march seven times. Well, Gideon, take them down to the brook. And anyone that lap like a dog, they have to keep looking up because you're looking for the enemy. Uh, some people just, that's where we are in church. Some people always be, you know, you, because you don't want to be lapping like a dog. While some people, uh, I'm waiting down here at the river. <laughs> Walking defeated. No, you're not defeated. God bless you tonight. If you stay to the substance of my teaching, and if you missed it, we could go back and take your time and go through it. The, the spiritual articulation is there, and I know the Holy Ghost guided me. I felt it. I see it. I'm walking in it. You can go back and capture it. Because, again, if you end up like a Gideon, no wonder only the 300. And God specifically knew it would have been 300. God is not caught. He doesn't have to... Uh, catch up with information. He knows even before the act is done. He knows. So that's when God says, anyone that lapped like a dog, he knew the number compared to those. He says, send them back home. Send them back home. Victory can't come through them. Bishop Smith, are you there? Thank you for your patience and thank you for being with us another uh, Tuesday night. Um, Pastor Morant, Bethel Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ, the pillar and ground of truth. Uh, if you're streaming with us on YouTube or Zoom platform or if you're in the building, Continue to come. I am, I am I'm greatly appreciative of your time. I know that time is so precious nowadays. nowadays. Uh, and for you to take the time to tune in, that means there's an interest, much less the time I put in. Amen. I'm trying to be my best. And my best, again, is, is not good enough. I must die to myself. And then what God uh, needs for you to receive, hey, you will receive it. God says, I'm closing. Bishop, are you there? So I trust that you're there. God says, Philip, leave this revival and let me translate you to an Ethiopian eunuch on a chariot. God knew that the Ethiopian couldn't be converted by nobody else but Philip. So God is not caught off guard. He knows what you need and he can make this gentleman, ha, if it's his will. But we got to submit to his will, all of us, from the pulpit to the pew. God bless you. Bishop Smith, for the third time. Are you there, sir? Go ahead, sir. Otherwise, I'm going to pray in the sanctuary. Go ahead, sir. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your patience, saints. Do it, do it. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it again in our midst. Oh, God, sir, yes. My people, my people are destroyed because. Yes. Mm. Oh, 
Come on, sir. That's right, sir. My heart has become a, a, a secret vault. Oh, it's become a... My God, nothing could get in but the Word. And I got to hide it from the Word snatchers, the gossipers in church, the troublemakers in church. Yes, Bishop. I've got to hide it. I'm trying to take it out of me. Yes, sir. Oh. Mm. Through his word, we're made clean, Bethel. Through his word. The teaching of his word. You need a teacher, Bethel. Ah, yasha. All around. Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Appreciate your prayer over my life, sir. Holy, hallelujah, Sha. God, we are waiting for the eternal manifestation of the glory of God in our midst. We are waiting for it. As you did on the day of Pentecost, I know you're going to do it again. There shall be one last shout. There shall be one last glory. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his counsels upon thee and give you his peace. Let us say hallelujah three times, saints of God. Come on with me. Hey, Oh, yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The third time. The song says, revive us again. Revive us. Revival is on the way, Bethel. Let not your heart be troubled. Hold your chin up. Lift it up. God is on the way. Prepare to meet him when he comes into this house. God bless you. We love you, saints. Good night. Good night.